Hi, in this video I'll be showing you this. It's the Panasonic TX40 HX800. Um, the 800 models are actually available in four different sizes. There's the 40 inch, which is this one. There's also a 50, 58 and 65. Uh, all of the functionality, so all of the benefits I'll show you uh, on this TV are replicated on the other sizes, but this is actually the first one we've got into stock, the 40 inch. So what I want to do today is to show you the setup process, some of the features and benefits that it offers, the connections and things. Um, I'll show you some of the uh, picture benefits that Panasonic are putting onto these now. Um, and just generally get it set up. So first of all I want to show you around the back of the TV and some of the connections that it's got. So first thing to show you, so I'll basically work left to right. So you've got the buttons on the back of the TV. So hopefully you can see there that you've got the input channel up and down, volume up and down, and then the on and off button at the bottom. Um, as we go move over to the right, you've got the wall mount. So on this one it's a 200 by 200. Uh, I'm really pleased that Panasonic have stuck with this size because it's the most universal size. So uh, the main advantage is that if you have got a bracket on the wall already, then it should work with this TV as long as it's a 200 by 200 um, and also if you are looking at buying a bracket then that size is the most common. Uh, you've got the mains lead so the mains connection just to the left of where the bracket sits. Um, the, the mains lead is actually at right angles um, so it does make it easier so if you are putting it into uh, I'll just show you that actually just pop this down so this is the the mains lead that it comes with so as I say it's a 90 degree angle so that when it goes into the back of the TV then it does face down which if you're wall mounting it then that makes life a lot easier so as we move to the right we've got the component connection and we've got the audio connections as well so if you want to connect a, a piece of audio equipment up then you can just use these ones here. Uh, you have got the HDMI connections and USB. So you've actually got three HDMI on this and you've got two USB connections and you've got the digital audio connection here as well. So if you've got a, uh, say a soundbar that you want to connect up to it, then that is normally the best solution to use the optical connection here. And as we move around to the right hand side, then uh, we've got the Ethernet connection. So if you did want to hardwire it, then you can do, although you have got Wi-Fi built in. Uh, you've got the aerial connection, uh, which I'm pleased they put a lot of these on the side, because if you are going to wall mount it, which quite a lot, a lot of people do now, then it just makes life so much easier for some of the cables to come out the side. And you've also got a little uh, connection here, that'll be a three and a half mil connection. So if you want to connect some headphones or a subwoofer into there, then you can do. And then you've got the common inf interface slot at the top. Now something we talk a lot about in the showroom, as far as when people are buying TVs, is the size of the pedestal. Now, I know it's not high on the agenda when you're looking at especially all the specs and everything, but if you've already got a stand or if you've got a piece of, say, a, a piece of furniture in the corner, then you want to make sure that the TV is going to fit on okay. Um, now Panasonic have changed the design of these over the years and I'm really really glad that they've gone back to this centre design uh, rather than the, the silly feet on the end because uh, we did find when they bought those models out that they were, um, although the TVs were very good, they were actually pretty difficult to sell because you have to have a really big stand for it to sit on. But anyway, so this one's only 53 centimetres wide by 24 centimetres deep. And the advantage is, even if you have got a small stand, like this one, because this is a, just a, a basic glass stand, this is only 60 centimetres wide, then it will sit on there okay. So this is the remote control that it comes with. And if you've had a Panasonic TV before, then this is quite a familiar layout. Uh, you've got all the standard functions, so you've got the volume and channel up and down, uh, on and off button at the top. And some of the buttons that they've used for several, well, quite a few years now. So you've got things like the, the home button. I'll, I'll show you that in a bit more detail in a minute in the guide. Uh, Netflix 
is quite an important one now but uh, again I'll go through that in a bit more detail but just really to show you the layout also if you have got a Panasonic recorder then you can use the basic functionality from that recorder on this remote so you've got things like the play, fast forward, rewind, pause, stop um, for your recorder so when you first turn the TV on then it wants to know which country you're in uh, it does also want to know the home or shop uh, that's quite important because in things like the shop setting then it'll be a lot brighter because um, what Panasonic want to do basically is is when it's sitting on a shelf they really want it to stand out so you'll find that the shop settings are a lot brighter compared to the home setting so I will set that up using the shop mode um, just to confirm that so first we'll want to connect to the internet this is showing you some of the apps that are on here so yes we want to go through with that um, the overall process to set up the internet is, is very easy so as we go through you can select wired if you want to uh, if the router is near to the TV then it is normally a preferred option um, but for the majority of people you want to use it wirelessly so we'll select wireless and all I do is I'll go through and get this set up and then the next stage is the free view auto setup and all this is doing is this is just getting the channels uh, it's basically chewing the TV in and as it says at the top there it'll take about three minutes and what it does is it just lists all the channels it's got the uh, type so the, yeah basically the free TV and it also shows the quality uh, and what you will find is as it goes through it will actually reorder them so once it's got all of these hopefully because the area we've got here is is pretty good then it will actually list them and yeah so that's uh, that's showing some of the the better quality ones and all it does is it does a take so it takes about three minutes to do and then uh, it'll put them in the right order so once it's done that then it will sort the channels for the best signal quality that's really how we want it because what I want to do is I want to pick the strongest channels at the top they're the ones we want to watch so now it's all set up then when you press the guide button that's the button just there then what it will do is it will actually show you all of the programs that are on at the moment uh, you can actually have a look ahead if you want to so you can uh, just follow the instructions at the bottom but I do really like this layout this kind of layout they have used for several years and it's nice and easy to read and it's something that a lot of people do comment on uh, but you can just go down to a certain program so if you if you wanted to watch this for on uh, on quest then you just highlight that press the OK button and what it does is it just shows you um, a, some rough information on it. it shows you the time so between seven and eight it's on for 60 minutes so you've got the watch now or record uh, that's basically if you want to connect a, a USB device up to it then you can record that uh, but most people you just want to watch it now so you just press OK and then it goes to it so something else to mention on here you've actually got something called the Freeview Play button and with Freeview Play it's a brilliant service uh, because what you can do so when you've got the guide on like this you can clearly see what's on at the moment and going ahead but if you have a look here you'll see there's a little option down here for previous um, what this does is this enables you to watch programs that have not long been on um, it's sort of thing so you can actually go back for the last week so if you wanted to watch say on Thursday the 2nd if you wanted to watch the weather then just click on that so this was on yesterday and then just watch now and that's just using the internet and you do need to have an aerial connected as well for this you can't just use the internet uh, but on this you just need to sign in to the iPlayer um, so that's quite an easy process to do in the first place but yeah once you've done that got it all set up then you can actually go back and watch content that you've missed so as you press the menu button on the remote that's just at the top then there are so many different picture options on here uh, this year especially Panasonic have done a really good job of some of the technology they put into the TV 
uh, to enhance the picture. Uh, you've got things like H6 processor, uh, you've got local dimming, uh, HDR10 Plus with Dolby Vision, and all of this technology is really designed to enhance the picture. Uh, okay, we're only using Freeview here at the moment, but if you are going to play uh, something like a, a Sky or Virgin Broadcast or even proper 4K content, then that's really where you do see the benefits of it. Um, something that on the older TVs, the GX800 models, uh, the viewing angle on the picture, I'll be completely honest, wasn't fantastic. So if you sit straight ahead, it was okay. But as you move off at an angle, so if you've got somebody sitting at, at an angle watching it, then they weren't that great compared to some of the older models. But this year, on the HX800, then I have been having a good look at it and Panasonic have really improved that. Uh, but as you go through some of the options here, clearly when it's first set up, and especially because it's in shot mode, then it's set to dynamic. Um, a lot of these are increased, so the contrast and the backlight are at full. But I won't cover all of this, but there's, there's a, a huge amount that you can change. Um, so things like the noise reduction, um, the uh, intelligent frame creation is quite good. And it, what it's trying to do is to explain at the bottom here. So it automatically makes the image images smooth and clear. Uh, but there's a, a lot of different settings that you can change on here. So what I'd always recommend is once you get the TV, um, clearly if you get someone else to set it up for you, then they will do that. But a lot of these settings are very personal to yourself. So just spend 15, 20 minutes going through all the settings. And you might find over time that you just want to change something because you, you might want it a little bit darker or you might want a little bit more color. So the next one is the sound setup. Uh, on this TV, you've actually got Dolby Atmos, and the main advantage of having it built into the TV is it creates like a, a 3D effect. Uh, you will find that with any TV nowadays, that because they are so thin, and all manufacturers have made them really thin over the years, that the quality of the speakers in the TV themselves are okay. So if you just want the TV on its own, then I must say that this one is, they, they are very good. Um, there's very little point in demonstrating things like the sound because through the microphone I've got you, you won't really get the full benefit. Um, but yeah, with, with Dolby Atmos it creates like a, a 3D sound from the TV. So if you are watching a film or a concert then it really makes it feel like you, you're there. But when it comes to a lot of the settings, you've got things like the, the bass and treble. Um, it's something I always try and point out to people because not all TVs have got this. Uh, bass and treble controls for me is quite important. So the next one is the Dolby Atmos. And again, what they're trying to do is they're trying to show you on the right hand side here what all of these mean. So when you've got Dolby Atmos content that's present, then it will come through the TV. Uh, you have got things like the surround option. So you've got different settings for that. So Dolby Surround is, is probably one of the preferred ones that a lot of people go for. Uh, you have got things like the bass boost, but um, you tend to find that sometimes that can be probably a, a little bit too much. Uh, you've also got the speaker settings and the headphone settings, so you can use headphones with it as well. So when you press the home button on the remote, then you've got a couple of options. Uh, one of the most popular ones, I assume the people will use is the, the apps. So on here, you've got a whole range of different apps that you can, you can go to. Uh, you've got some of the fairly standard ones. You've got things like Netflix that a lot of people use now. And on here, you've actually got the Netflix button. Uh, you have got things like YouTube. Uh, you've also got things like BritBox and Prime. So these are, the, I'm, I'm really pleased that Panasonic have got the major uh, streaming services on here. Um, you have also got a, a browser. Um, it is an internet browser. I'll be completely honest that most manufacturer browsers on the TVs are, I'll be honest, not that great. Um, the main thing is if you're going to use the remote control to do it, then you're much better to try and use a, a laptop or an iPad or a tablet, for example, than try to use this. It, it can be uh, a little bit 
uh, clunky to use. It does work, uh, but it's not as easy as using a separate device. So in the apps market, it just shows you a, a quite comprehensive list of what's around. So you've got some of the, uh, the video and movie options. Uh, so there's, there's a lot to choose from and not all of these are actually on the main menu to start with uh, because for, for some people you might not want to watch Russian TV so that's why they don't put it on the, the main menu but if you want to download it then as you can see here a lot of these are free uh, you've got quite a few uh, options here for things like music uh, you've got sports, games so there's a, there's a whole range here and I, I won't go through all of them but if you want to play your games on the TV, then you've uh, you've got quite a few options on here. The the kids, that's there's only a couple on here, but as as the year goes on, then you do tend to have different different options appear. Uh, news and weather is always a, a good range of of those ones, and also the lifestyle and, and more. So yeah, again, there's a lot to choose from on here. So I'd recommend coming in when you get the TV, come into the apps market, see if there's something that uh, takes your eye and download it onto the TV. Now something to bear in mind is when we very first set it up we put it into shop mode and what you'll find is if you do put it into shop mode then it is designed so that this is some content, it's some pre-stored content that's actually in the TV. So uh, that's why I'd always recommend when you're at home to put it into home mode because uh, what you will find this is uh, like a, a rolling advert for the Panasonic technology and although it's very impressive I'm sure at home you wouldn't really want to be watching that all the time. So just something else to mention so in the menu here you've got something called Bluetooth setup um, what you can do is if you've got Bluetooth headphones then you can use it with this TV so you don't have to worry about plugging bits in the back then you can just buy the headphones and use it straight with the TV which is always a great idea. So something else this year that Panasonic have put on this range of TVs are things like Google Assistant and Alexa. Uh, this is becoming fairly standard across the range of manufacturers. So if you want to talk through your speaker and it just enables you to do certain functionality through your TV. So it's, I'm really glad that they put it on this year. So I hope you enjoyed this quick video on the Panasonic TX40 HX800 TV. Uh, I know there's a huge amount to talk about on these TVs and I could talk for hours about all the technology and um, all of the little bits and bobs that they do but I'm sure you get bored of me talking for a, uh, over an hour. Um, if you are thinking of buying one of these then I have provided a link below to show you where to get one at a competitive price. Uh, please subscribe, so click the, the plus button on a YouTube channel, little thumbs up, that should be, not the plus. Uh, leave any comments below. Uh, I'd always ask for comments, whether it's good or bad, about the video. I know there's, there's probably some bits I've missed out on the TV. Uh, I've not talked about all the technology and everything that they do. Um, but as I say, there's, uh, there's only so, so long that you'd want to listen to me talking. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching.